Once again, the autosportradio.com show is coming to you from the Grant King Race Shop at 8155 Crawfordsville Road in uh, Indianapolis. If you get a chance, whenever this uh, isolation concludes, you need to come down here. It's a working museum, some great cars. You can see behind me is the Olsenite Eagle, owned by Ozzy Olson and driven by Bobby Unser. It is a car for sale. If you're looking for a vintage car or you have one and need a little work done on it, don't hesitate. You need an engine rebuilt. Grand King Shops can take care of it. Give them a call. Tell them what you're looking for or what you've got. Number is 317-820-3595. Today's show is presented by Honda and Honda HPD, the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, the NTT IndyCar Series, SVRA, and VP Insurance. We normally come to you from McGilvery's, but it's closed at the moment. They're remodeling. They are going to open up for carryouts shortly, and I'll let you know when that happens. But next time you go in there, I think you're going to go, holy smokes, I'm in the wrong place. Completely remodeled. Founded in 1993 to spearhead Honda's entry into IndyCar racing, Honda Performance Development has overseen successful racing efforts at all levels of the sport, from karting and quarter midges to IndyCar and prototype sports cars. HPD offers race engines and co competition parts for professional, amateur, and entry-level uh, racers. For more information about HPD and the company's racing product lines, please visit hpd.honda.com. I uh, want to remind you, if you, uh, if you need a dental work, any dental work, everybody looks forward to that. Let me tell you a place you will look forward to go to. That's the Indy Dental Group. Dr. Jack Miller, an Indy 500 veteran, and his wife, Liz Lewis, have a phenomenal practice. Give them a call. Make an appointment. It's number 317-846-6125. And our new computer guru is uh, A-plus affordable computer doctor, Steve Fries. He's like the old-time medical doctor. He makes house calls. Give him a call, tell him your problem, he'll help you out. The number is 317-328-0766. And if you ever wondered why these guys and gals love driving Indy cars, there's a way you can find out. The Indy Racing Experience can tell you, teach you. Go, you can go to IndyRacingExperience.com and book a date. And in the promo box, put DK1 and you get a 50% discount. Or you can call Shonda at 317-243-7171. Again, ask for Shonda. If it's time for insurance for your home, your car, or commercial property, do what I and a lot of people have done, VP Insurance. Talk to Mike Pardee. He can help you, and you have a problem. He's right there with you. Give him a call, 317-248-0070. And if you're a vintage car fan, be it uh, uh, Trans Am cars or sports cars or uh, any kind of car, the, the SVRA has it, and they've got a magazine that is absolutely phenomenal. So go to svra.com and subscribe to Speed Tour Magazine. It's a first-class magazine. You will love it. My first guest, or my only guest today at the moment, uh, everybody kind of wonders, the partners of IndyCar, a lot of them, what do they gain from being a part of a, a racing series, an IndyCar series? And Firestone makes tires for the series. They're phenomenal. They, they work seemingly well. But does it translate to the vehicle on the road? We're going to try and find out. I have with me the director of Bridgestone America's Motorsports Program. Please welcome us, Lisa Boggs. Lisa, thanks for joining. Hello. Hello how are you? Thanks for having me. Um, what got you into this? How did you first start and did you want to get into motorsports or did it just happen that it, it worked out? Um, it just happened that it worked out and I got uh, quite lucky to find something that I feel this passionate about and I enjoy doing. Um, it all started with my first job out of college. Uh, I was hired at an ad agency and one of their main clients to this day was Philip Morris and mm -hmm. I got to work on Marlboro. Well, as we all know, Marlboro is a long time, very important sponsor um, in motorsports globally. And I had the good fortune of working on the program uh, with uh, Roger Penske and his team back in the day when Marlboro was a sponsor. and that kicked it off. I went to a race um, on behalf of the agency, of the client, and was at Michigan Speedway. Cars came for the green, came across the start finish and into turn one, and that was it. I was hooked. <laughs> so um, spent a couple more years at the agency, and then the, the folks at Philip Morris were looking for someone to do PR um, at that time, particularly working with Alan Sir Jr. So they offered me the position. Um, I accepted gladly and quite humbly, and the rest is history. I've just been able to do a number of different roles in motorsports that brought me to uh, the most excellent job that I have today. 
Where did you go to school? What did you graduate? What was your degree in? Um, I went to Miami of Ohio, and I had a degree in uh, mass communications with a minor in marketing. And you have done both in your career. I know I ran into you when you were working with Roger for the Marlboro program. I was just telling yep. my IT guru that I've probably known you 25 years. Uh, uh, yes, you would have known me least. a good 25 years. I've been fortunate enough to do this. We're lucky, aren't we, that we get to, we get to make a profession out of something we love. That's true. And I have to say, as bad as this virus is, I'm very, it's working out for, for Autosport because normally trying to get you on a Tuesday is impossible. Well, well we have, now I can yeah, teach you. I know. Thank you, actually, for the invitation. Again, given how many times we've tried this, um, <laughs> we always do a great job in May. And then somehow you would think with as much time as we spend at Indy in May, I don't, by the time we try to coordinate, 47 things are going on. So, yes, the one, one of the good things about this work from home and the protocols, we all regroup and look at the bit of how the world is now is we get a chance in the middle of a day um, to chat. Um, you are the director of uh, Bridgestone uh, Motorsports. What what does Firestone's aim for being involved in motorsport? What does it do for them? Because obviously they make their money in retail, but do they actually use these tires and use what they find works for them and translate it to the uh, vehicles? Yes, there is a an amount of we like to call it track to road, and even a little bit of like road to track. Um, as most of your listeners and, and viewers online know, I mean, Firestone has been in motorsports for over a hundred years. And it started with Harvey, who quickly realized uh, racetracks and racing, particularly the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, and IndyCar was a great way to show what the tires are capable of doing. If Firestone tires can meet the demands of an IndyCar and a 500 mile race at the Speedway, that was a great way to show the ultimate proof point of what a passenger tire um, can do, the dependability, the durability. And that core reason stands today. Um, except for a bit of a hiatus, uh, at least as it relates to IndyCar, we've been in the sport since the first Indy 500. Our uh, Ray Haroon was on our tires and we're as proud of that today as we were then. Um, and yes, there are things we do that are materials related, testing related, modeling related. The engineers that are working on race tires partner with engineers working on passenger tires. So that transfer of data and knowledge and technology and thinking and innovation, um, we do both on the racing side and on the passenger side. You know, it, it's always impressed me that that you know when somebody says well they're going to have a tire test what do they have to test well they have a lot of things the minute they come out with a new car they have to change the tires there's more downforce or there's less there's more speed all these things uh, go are ultimately seen in the tires and a tire you'll hear guys say geez there's no grip on this particular track and other tracks they'll tell you you know the fire stones stick and one thing that's always impressed me is that a, a number of series have tire problems during the race. In, IndyCar and Firestone very, very, very seldom have a tire come apart. Well, we're, listen, we're very, very proud of the, the work we do. Um, it is something that, again, whether it's a passenger tire, a race tire, a commercial tire, an ag tire, any and all tires um, that are produced by Bridgestone Firestone, we go through the ultimate in terms of, again, the dependability of the tire, the performance of the tire, and the innovation. So our team of engineers are amazing. Uh, we've been in this a long time. We work in collaboration with IndyCar, with teams, with drivers to ensure, to your point, that as there are changes to the tracks, changes to the cars, things like the aero screen, you know, which, which makes a difference in terms of total weight, uh, where the weight is positioned on the car, moving weight forward, all those things do affect the tire. So we make sure that we are on top of that and looking at everything possible, all the data, so that ultimately when we get to a track and the fans get to the track and the tires get to the track, um, we've got some of the world's best racing tires to make sure the drivers can put on one heck of a show for the fans. How much difference there is, is there with tire wear uh, varying with drivers? I mean, every driver doesn't dive the same. I've known guys that have gotten in a car and said, you got to be kidding. I'm going to kill myself. And another guy gets in and says, it's perfect. 
So that has right. to have an effect on tires, driving style. Uh, yeah, you know what? That, that makes it fun. Um, <laughs> Again, it's like setup they talk about, you know, different drivers, like different setups, different feel to a car, uh, depending on the track and how they drive. And, and to your point, that same thing applies. Driving style, how they may take a turn, uh, how much brake, all the inputs the driver is putting in, especially with that given setup on a given track with a given surface, all of that goes into the equation of of tire wear and of invariances by driver. So we just do our best, we listen to everybody, we take all the data, we take all the knowledge we've had for doing this for more than 100 years, um, being the sole tire supplier since 2000 now for the IndyCar series, and take all that and find the tire that we think is the best you know, for that race, that venue, that day, that car, um, and then let, you know, let the drivers do what they do and figure it out. And as you said, for some tire wear and management, it's a real advantage. Others, something they're still working on honing their, their skills out. Well, you hear frequently the tire wear, you got to manage your tires and you wonder, how do you manage yep. tires? Your driving style is how you manage tires, I assume. Yep. Yep. Um, as the uh, director of motorsports for uh, Bridgestone Firestone, what is your job? What do you do? I, um, I am very fortunate that I get to do um, a lot of things that relates to the program. Uh, the one thing that I, I don't do uh, at all, um, and that's good because we've got an incredible group, uh, Kara Adams, who is our, our chief engineer. Um, she and her team are the ones that make all the engineering decisions as it relates to the tires. We collaborate, we work closely, we're talking all the time but all of the engineering decisions are Kira and her team. That's the, the one area that I um, am involved in and talk to them, but it's not my background and, and my ultimately my decision. Um, but anything else related to the program from a marketing, a communications, track partnerships, IndyCar relationships, um, all of that uh, I get to be involved with, as well as working with stakeholders at Bridgestone, who leverage IndyCar for their businesses. So I get to work with a lot of the different groups at Bridgestone, um, as well as IndyCar, whether it's the competition side, the marketing side, all the track folks, all the teams. Um, I'm really lucky, it's a great job. I get to work with so many people across the paddock. Um, it's, it's, really, it's really great. And uh, I've got a great team at, at, uh, at Bridgestone who are focused on motorsports. So, you know, all around, I get, to, I get to do a lot of a lot of different things. Well, speaking of Kara Adams, the chief engineer, she's going to be a guest with us, and she Great. will be seen yep. shortly. Something that, that always impressed me is, and I think I've seen her uh, early on, is whenever a car comes in from practice, they, the first thing, Firestone jumps over the wall, and they measure the temperatures in the tire. And in yep. the first few years when I watched it, I thought, what in the world does that do? Then I got to work for Dick Simon. And Dick Simon was not a big uh, proponent of, compo uh, of com computers. And he would go out and measure the temperatures himself. Then he questioned the driver, how's the car, how does it feel? He said, I can tell everything what the car is doing by the temperatures on the tires. And if the driver oh. tells me what I see, we're home free. If not, we got a problem. <laughs> it's very interesting. And what does, what does Firestone do when they come and record the temperatures? What do they use that information for? Well, I can, I'm going to actually let, when you talk to Kara, I'll have her speak more directly to, to all of that, to that side of it. But um, what I will say is it's another data point for us to understand what is going on, you know, with the tires on those particular cars at that track. And again, we're measuring things like ambient temperature, track temperature, that data point, um, again, is just another way for us to understand the tire performance and what we're seeing at that venue. Now, you said you uh, are involved in the marketing. How does Firestone market their presence in the motorsports world? What do you have anything to do with that? Yes, we um, we do um, a very holistic, comprehensive program to leverage our Firestone Racing platform. It's one of the main platforms for the brand. And it's one that we're very proud of and our teammates are proud of. The dealers that we work with 
they're able to leverage it. So we do everything from the traditional advertising you might see on TV, uh, digitally, socially, a lot of content, to inviting folks to come on out to the track for a VIP hospitality experience, to looking at, okay, Mario and Juddy, we've got a longstanding relationship with. We're able to have Mario go out and help with a store opening, for example. So we look at any and all opportunities related to ultimately growing our business. Um, at the end of the day, we're in this to grow the business, to tell the story of the Firestone brand. So we really have a very holistic look at how we can do that. So does it translate when, when you can say uh, on the day following the Indianapolis 500, uh, Alexander Rossi won, Firestone won the Indianapolis 500? Of course, a lot of people may not realize that you supply all the tires, but again, I've, I've noticed over the years that Firestone very seldom has a problem with a tire. I know of other series where they shred. Firestone doesn't have that problem. Well, very, very rarely, which I think is quite amazing when you think about it. Yeah, we're very, very proud of our track record. Um, you know, when you went to college and wanted to get into marketing and so forth, um, I, I, were you looking for sports or were you looking to motor sports in particular? Or do you just want to get in sports of any kind? It, actually, when I was in college, um, I did know that I wanted to go work for an advertising agency. I knew that much at that point. So getting the opportunity at an agency like Leo Burnett in Chicago was quite exciting for me. And to this day has been really the core, the foundation of, I think, what has allowed me to ultimately work for some amazing companies and be in the sport. But I did not set out for sports. Um, it all comes back, as I said, to getting the opportunity to work on Philip Morris, work on Marlboro, uh, go out to the race. And this, I remember so clearly at Michigan, as I mentioned, <laughs> and you knew about Indy 500 and you knew about some drivers. I wasn't not aware of it, but I wasn't following it or think I really want to do this. It was that perfect storm of being somewhere with a great group of people and realizing what an amazing opportunity that would be to be able to work in this environment and then the door opening to, to you know, go on board with Philip Morris on behalf of that sponsorship and I've never left. And I think as you know, and you, we see people in the industry, those of us who get in it and have a passion for it and love it, it's what we do. It's what we love. Um, if you don't, then you probably are gonna get out of it pretty quickly because it is a, a 24 seven, really almost a lifestyle. So. I'm very honored and very lucky that I got into it and then was able to build uh, a career out of it. Well, I got an early introduction to, and I can't think of the guy's name to save my life. I went to a high school in Wisconsin and one of the guys I was in class with, his father was an executive with Firestone down in South America somewhere. I can't remember. He was a regional uh -huh. president or something. And I got introduced to Firestone tires from him. Then, uh, uh, we had, I forget what the series was, an Indy Lights driver by the name of Nick Firestone, who was part of the Firestone family. Yes. And he drove yes. for us. I've been a Firestone guy since in my high school days because the guy gave me a set of tires. He said, here, run these. Run the hell out of them. Tell me what you yeah. think. I mean, he knew what he was going to tell them, of course. Uh, and, and I've been there ever since. And I think uh, to use this platform to develop what I drive on the street or what others drive on the street is, I think, is you know, fantastic. It's very interesting how they do that. Yeah. And, and you sometimes you'll hear that, that reference, oh, it's in our DNA. It really is in our DNA. It goes back to Harvey in the early 1900s who realized the importance, the appeal, the engagement. We, we sometimes say he was one of the first sports marketers. Um, and he believed in his tires. He had an amazing product then. It's a great product today. And it's still a great way, as I said, to tell the Firestone story. We love the fans. We appreciate the fans. We obviously love the sport. And especially IndyCar, because it's so demanding. There's nothing like it. The different types of circuits, the technology in the cars, the diversity of the drivers, everything about it makes you really have to bring your A game when it comes to a tire. Well, 
I have the privilege of knowing some of your people, some of them have retired, but I know Roderick and I know Dana and I, there's a yeah. couple other people I know with Firestone and they're all yeah. super good people and enjoy working with them. They've always been helpful if I've had a question or I was looking for a Firestone uh, calendar, I, I would get some and people flock to get them because the pictures on them are, are spectacular. Well, I know uh, that you have other things to do than sit and talk to me and I appreciate you taking the time uh, the only good thing as far as I'm concerned with regard to auto sport is I can do this now at any time when somebody's available, we can uh, stream it uh, or videotape it and, and have a conference. And I appreciate you taking the time to do that. Uh, this is great. I appreciate the invitation again, given how many times we've had to take a rain <laughs> check. This is a lot of fun. Um, love talking about it. Um, your support and dedication to the sport and all you bring. So appreciated. We can't do what we do without folks like you doing what you do. So um, anytime, we've got a lot more time now. So, yeah. you know, if you, we get, you know, a couple of weeks from now, as maybe we get closer and we start to understand what the season's going to bring, uh, we'd love to, we'd love to catch up again and really hope that we're chatting next time at a racetrack. Uh, one quick last question. Do you mm -hmm. think, are you guys prepared if the season opens and go to Texas? Are you ready for this year in Texas with the we are ready with yep. the new we air screen and everything? You're set. We're prepared. We're working very close as always, really. Yeah. But obviously, as the team at IndyCar evaluates different options, looks at uh, potential scheduling, we work hand in hand with them to make sure that. Uh, we are prepared and we are here to support whatever decisions are made. So should we find ourselves in Texas in June as the kickoff? We'll be ready. We'll be ready for whatever, whatever the ultimate schedule becomes and when we all feel good about kicking the season off. All right. I appreciate your time. Uh, it's always, always a pleasure to chat with you, although it's briefly at the racetrack because you've got a clipboard and papers under your arm and you'll say, hello, how are you? What's going on? And off you go to another meeting. Thanks for your time, Lisa. Thank you, sir. Have a wonderful day. Thank you. And you too. Stay safe. My guest has been the uh, director of Bridgestone America's Motorsports, Ms. Lisa Boggs. Thanks for being here around and watching to us. We'll be back again soon. Till then, Don K saying bye. <laughs>